Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Heart Sign of Black and again asking you to hit that share button. Thank you if you hit like or subscribe. I appreciate that, but sharing is important because that benefits us and the message is more important than the messenger. Listen, 2020 is the year, but not because of the repetition of the digits two and zero. 2020 is the year because it's now. 2019 was the year, 2018 was the year. There was never a right time to tolerate or dish out undeserved and unprovoked disrespect and ill treatment. There was never a right time to oppress or be oppressed. It has always been the wrong time to oppress or to be oppressed, to dish out or to accept ill treatment and disrespect undeserved and unprovoked. Let this be your mantra and your slogan in 2020. That it's going to be the same thing in 2021. Now, let me get to the meat of what I wanted to say here. I'm not going to call Nicole Michelle's name out because I hate her. It's not that. But I want to make a correction. You can't go in on BGS, whether it's on your page or on his page, whatever the case is. Ain't no need from going in on BGS or going in on other men because they don't agree with your femininity standards. You're teaching these women fem femininity so that they can succeed in the market of men. Well, you got men saying, actually, boo, you don't need to be doing that because, and why are they saying that? What are they telling you? You don't need to be doing that because, hey, look, at the end of the day, um, we, we ain't going to fall for that. Because femininity is not for sale. And I'm here to tell you now, Nicole Michelle, with no hatred and no rancor, but with the understanding that you need to be corrected on this, because, okay, maybe you just didn't know, that now I am standing in a Southeastern Asian nation, next door to two countries where people love to go and trick and buy the punani, or find girlfriends, or find wives, all three. In the country in which I am now... <laughs> No, usually uh, a lot of Muslim men don't go, but this is a Muslim country where I am. It shares the border with two particular hot spots in Southeast Asia for pussy buying or finding a girlfriend or finding a wife. In this nation, the Chinese control the economy, but they're not from here. The indigenous people are from here, but they don't control the economy. They're tropical. They're laid back. Sometimes they hold each other back. However, the Chinese control the economy. The indigenous women at no point will they turn around and think they can sell their femininity. If that were the case, they would have been blended into the Chinese population a long time ago. They haven't. They've maintained um, a separate identity from the Chinese ethnicity because the Chinese have been here for generations. Over a century. And... <clears throat> While the Chinese maintain their Chinese-ness and distinctions, they still speak Mandarin and Cantonese and all this other stuff. The fact remains that they could have easily just gotten the local indigenous women if hypergamy, um, the way that we understand it, was always justifiable with no sort of moral con uh, constraints. Yet and still, what's happened here? The women, the local, the indigenous women, have never at any point looked at their men and said, you're just a coon. They don't do that. Well, you're just a beta male. You got dominant. They have the economy and you don't. He's got more money. So I'm going to go ahead and sell this pussy to him uh, and, and, and actually do things for him that I wouldn't do for you for a hell of a lot less in exchange. This is not going on here. The femininity of these women, and they are feminine, is not for sale, even though the indigenous women have to work just like the men while the Chinese women get to stay at home. They make more money here than they could back in mainland China. But you know what? There's a moral component to it too. The Chinese aren't Muslim, so they sell alcohol. A bunch of other people wanted alcohol, so what do they do? They went to the Chinese. And that's how the Chinese started off making their money. The indigenous people here, they're Muslim. They couldn't sell alcohol and they couldn't buy it, they couldn't consume it. They could only use it as a disinfectant, um, and that's it. Or a cleaning agent. They could not consume it. They couldn't sell it or buy it with the intention of consumption or manufacture it with the intention of consumption and they held to that and consequently they made less money than the Chinese and their women have never gave them crap for it it's just understood she's Muslim God built this world as a test she can sell out or she can take the test one of the two 
that's it god put the test in it this nicole michelle is why i've always said that islam is the solution for black people i don't say that because i'm muslim i'm muslim because i can say that i'm muslim because i saw that when i was researching it before i became muslim the test is built into nature itself it's built into the way the world is itself no man can be perfect no woman can be perfect we men are forced to understand that when we're at a very young age if a woman's perfect she ain't gonna be interested in you that's how we're trained to think no one is sitting up here and telling you and your gender in the western world the same thing so this is why it is that you're taking femininity and you're selling it that's not gonna work you're taking femininity and you're saying to these women be feminine flutter around like butterflies but girl if he don't make a hundred grand he dusty and he broke excuse me over here next door next door to there next door to here in the other direction and next door to there and all around here femininity is not for sale nor is masculinity if your man is broke you're still feminine because he's still your man if you can't deal with it you leave him and you might not be able to find anything better than that because people understand here that wealth is not common people here understand only a few people are wealthy if everybody was equally wealthy that would be the new standard of poverty if everyone had a million dollars how much do you think used cars would cost inflation would simply rise people would be right back where they started it's not going to change most people ain't going to be wealthy you don't give up your femininity because of that but over there where you are in the West, you telling women to take the femininity that they haven't had and turn around and have it back again, but only in exchange for some unrealistic financial reward that most people in the world will never see. Again, I don't say this because I hate you. I say this because you need to hear it. I say it because it's real. You have mutually exclusive standards. Many Western women do. He has to have money. He has to also be young enough to blow your back out in the bedroom. He has to have money, he has to have a sense of responsibility, and he also has to have charm. A sense of responsibility and charm don't go hand in hand. You can have a certain mixture of both, but you can't have 100% of both because if you have a sense of responsibility, that means you're going to face stress. Stress will ruin charm. End of story. If someone's super charming, that means they've already fulfilled all the responsibilities in life or they're ducking and dodging responsibilities and therefore avoiding stress. Or God just gave them a lucky break and they don't have as much stress to face. One of them, three. That's it. But you want a man that can sit up here and face a whole lot of stress but somehow still have charm. No, they, they, see, 100% charm and 100% responsibility don't go hand in hand. It's not the way that works. People have real worries in life. Now, we know that there are certain things that are mutually exclusive and they don't even have to be. Women just make them that way just because. We can't go to the strip club, pick out a stripper, turn her into a housewife and take her home. I mean, that wouldn't be a problem. If we, it, we wouldn't be facing a problem if we could. But you think that you're entitled to flutter around in exchange for an income that most human beings around the world would never see, even in a wealthy nation like the U.S., have you ever stopped to think about the math and you mad because BGS called you on it? I'm gonna flag your channel. Are you serious? He did what he was supposed to do. If he called you on it. It's not wrong that you're telling the women to be feminine. It's wrong that you're telling them to sell it. And for that kind of a price. It doesn't change the fact that even though you're not one of these women that's trying to push the men away, you're still pushing the men away because the men are saying, wait a minute, she's feminine over here and that's a third world country and she ain't doing too well, but she's feminine. Wait a minute, she's feminine over here and that's a second world country, but she's still feminine. She may not like me, but she's feminine. Do you understand what you're doing? What you saying to these women in the West? You need to teach the women that follow you to understand that just like uh, uh, the men, the indigenous men here, were uh, they have faced relative poverty because they've had a, a, a moral conscience. The same thing's going to happen over there in the West. Black heterosexual men are going to face systematic impoverishment. And if they have a conscience, it's going to be even worse because that's how the system is set up. You can't have the masculinity of the black man and the wealth of the white man in the same guy. Them two ain't gonna happen. Now, if a white guy could be just as alpha as a, as a black man, then that's fine. But that's a white dude. But you're not gonna get a brother 
that's like Michael Jordan and white folks don't either make him broke or throw him in jail or both. It just ain't going to happen. The system's set up that way. So really, what you need to be telling them is get feminine and then go abroad and get you one of them men that can appreciate it. And since you're already feminine, that allows you to compete with his own women. But you also got, you know, the, the, the TNA to compete with his women. That's what you tell them. You need to be telling them how to use their bodies in addition to the femininity to satisfy the men internally. You need to be telling them how to use their bodies to satisfy a husband's testicles. That's what you, and penis. You need to be teaching them that. Because at the end, y'all are always trying to desexualize everything. That's not how it works. It never was. You don't want men withholding the money that they do have. But you all want to sit up here and, and try to withhold the TNA that you have until, of course, you come across a guy like Derek Jackson, who's always in the gym, in which case he ain't even got to pay nothing. And you, you said this yourself. That's why I'm uh, talking about this. The program is not going to work. It's not helping these women. These standards that they have are mutually exclusive even to each other, and they don't have to be. And then when men have mutually, ex uh, when men have standards uh, that are mutually exclusive, they're forced to outgrow them at a very young age, and they should. We, we do have to outgrow them at a young age. You can't have a girl be special and then turn around and have her be a slut just for you. Okay, we have to learn that in middle school. And you ain't telling these women the things they need to know when they in their 30s and 40s. And you've admitted that had you been more feminine, you might still be married today. You've admitted this. Nicole, you're teaching women at your age how to be more feminine. Okay, um, at your age, I like MILFs. I'm fine with MILFs. But most men aren't. And the reason I know that most men aren't is because I'm one of the few that's okay with them. I'll take a MILF. But others wouldn't. Others are like, well, the only thing I'll do is bag a MILF. I never commit. In my case, because I am old, I'm not necessarily against it. It just depends on how she acts. But, you know, a lot, you're going to have to deal with the fact that a lot of other men just ain't dealing with, they ain't with that. Just like, just like you like what you like, a lot of men don't like women at all. And then come, and then come along, Johnny come lately talking about some femininity. Where was your femininity when you were in your 20s and you were young and tight? And you had the tits and the ass without that big old belly. I mean, I don't know what your gut size is, but I'm talking about women in general. Where was the femininity at that point when they were young and tight and attractive? You see... You and I both know that's not when you find it. You and I both know that women have to go through some stuff, namely a loss of options in men, to wake up in the Western world. I think I made my point. But at the end of the day, it boils down to this. These are one of the reasons why I've said that Islam is the uh, solution anyway, and I've said it without apology. Because in this case, the test being built in is understood. Now, whether you agree with that or not, with my statement about Islam being the only solution, you're going to have to tell your audience that the test is built in and, and stop giving them this idea that they're going to find everything they're looking for without anything that they're not or we're trying to avoid. I hope that this has been a benefit. Sign a blackout. Assalamu alaikum.